How you doing? Good, good to good. have you. Thank sir. you for having me, Papa. Good, good. Thank you, thank you. It's so good Papa. to have you as well. Thank you so much. Salute. So, this is amazing because, you know, we've been doing so much teachings. You know, I recognize on one of my uh, pages, we have over 3,000 teachings Whoa. on one of the pages. Wow. Over 3,000. Wow. Not one minute. Just think about it. Over 3,000. Oh, wow. And majority of those are over an hour. And that's in one month? <laughs> 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 Shoot, <laughs> man, have you wow. all crept up like this in the morning? <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. I, I, I thank all of you all for sewing into the ministry. I thank you so much for helping me out, and thank you for honoring me with your finances, your time, your love, your consistency, your presence, your commenting. I love the comments that you all leave on the broadcast and things like that. And you're always free to comment on the broadcast. Um, and it's a blessing to have all of you all in your um, presence, your attendance, your focus. And the truth of the matter is, a prophet raises up people to get to that zone of receptivity with him because we, we need you. Because when we're releasing information, it's a heart-to-heart -heart thing. Mm -hmm. So if your heart is hardened, mm -hmm. even though we have wells inside of us, that well stops when we're talking to you. Wow. Mm -hmm. So right now, Bennett, you can have all this revelation, you can know stuff, but as soon as you talk to somebody that's an unbeliever, it'll be like you're fumbling mm -hmm. with what you can release because you, you, it's a heart-to-heart -heart thing when you're in the prophetic. So... If somebody is not in a, a, a receptive place, you can feel it. So King Jesus has healing inside of his heart. But because healing is a heart-to-heart -heart thing, when he goes to heal them, he could not do many miracles. And the miracles was in his heart. Mm -hmm. So when he's trying to do the miracles, their heart is hardened mm -hmm. to receive. Wow. So even his heart is hardened. To release. Mm. Wow. So it, it, it's a blessing to have you all that let me take you to the degree. Um, at least when I'm teaching you on here. Mm -hmm. Now, there's things that happen like. You having a wisdom for your receptivity here is different than you having a wisdom for your personal life. Mm. Because you know, when you receive here, you, your wisdom could be flowing to receive and pay attention to me here. But say you're alone by yourself, that wisdom for that self aloneness and that, that, that time of temptation, that time of um, idle time, that's something that you'll have to forcefully plant yourself back, inaugurate yourself back into your heavenly place of seat. You can leave your seat. Mm -hmm. It's a seat. Mm -hmm. Rosa Parks didn't leave hers. <laughs> <laughs> Rosa, Rosa didn't leave hers. Wow. So you got to be dedicated to not leaving your seat. Mm -hmm. wow. Everybody can leave their heavenly place and seat whenever you want. Wow. And you can also sit down in it whenever you want. You can leave the flesh to the spirit at any time. Mm -hmm. You could be doing a million things wrong and step right back into power to do a million things right. Wow. Wow. That's what repentance is. Mm -hmm. Repentance is in the authority of the person. Mm -hmm. It's not in the authority of God. Mm -hmm. So everybody has wells of <clears throat> repentance in them already. Mm. Wow. And the residue of that is in your conscience. Mm. Wow. That's why in 1 John it says, if your heart condemn you, God is greater than your heart. So God put your heart to talk to you before he does. Wow. Deep. Yeah. One 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 four four four. These are uh, numbers that are in sequence. They have reasons for it. Number one, when we deal with four four four, I want to focus on that. Is the Holy Spirit bringing judgment to your life? Mm -hmm. He's judging your life. The number four 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 is is judgment. That means that there are court cases going on about you. 
whenever you see 444, there's court cases going on about Juan. Wow. There's court cases going on about Ben. Wow. 444 means that there are hearings, mm -hmm. trials going on about your life. Wow. And the next seasons that you're entering into. So when you see 444, you have to get in order. Mm -hmm. And 444 means that you got to start exercising godliness. If you're taking notes, remember this. 444 means that you have to now start exercising godliness. Wow. 444 means that you have to embrace the pain of self-control, mm -hmm. discipline. Um, Ephesians 2.10 the workmanship of God created created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Mm -hmm. Now you have to force yourself into those good works even when you don't feel it. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Wow. Whenever you see the number 444, always remember this. I'm telling you this as the oracle of God. It means that your life is being judged and now God is looking for more fruit from you. And he wants you to take the initiative. Did you know that 444 is also a judgment on your health? Wow. 444 means that there's something that Satan wants to attack your body with. And you're going to have to be obedient to stop the attack. Mm -hmm. okay. 444 can also mean that Satan was already attacking your body. And now it's time for healing. Wow. But there's a healing anointing in the 444. Mm -hmm. Wow. Ain't that something? That's powerful. Wow. Whenever you see 444... That is the spirit of God telling you, I'm going to start talking to you outside of your emotions. Mm. When you're tired, I may be on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to receive my fire over being tired. Mm. Peter was in 444 in the Garden of Gethsemane. Wow. Mm -hmm. Peter was in 444. Wow. When Jesus was telling him to watch and pray, that was 444. He didn't recognize it. There was 12 disciples, 444. Four, four. Four, four, four. Wow. Mm -hmm. Before you see anybody being judged, it was the disciples being judged. Mm -hmm. Judas got judged. Mm -hmm. They found Judas in that field. They called it the field of blood. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. But Judas was in 444. Four, four. 12. 4 a 12. Wow. So when you see 444, four, four, it's adding up to 12. It's adding up to discipleship is adding up to judgment what have you learned and what are you being fruitful with what you learn wow. <laughs> what you all see there it's just so powerful how your your wisdom, like you were saying, Papa, that the wisdom that you receive here is not the same as in your personal life. Mm -hmm. For instance, it's like when you go to work, you're not going to bring the knowledge of your work to your house mm -hmm. to apply it because it won't work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you need to you need to know the type of wisdom that you need to apply in each area of your life and everything that you do. Right. And and for you to know and recognize the mm. fruit that you need to bear. Because mm. something powerful that That's good. Papa was telling us is, um, I think it was in John when it says that he cuts the branches, those branches that are not giving out fruit. Mm. So Go if ahead. you recognize yeah. that you're not giving out the right fruit, yes. the fruit of the Spirit, yes. where... Did you learn wow. that you're not giving out the right fruit? Ooh. Where did you learn that you are condemned in your spirit, in your life? Mm -hmm. Where did you learn this stuff? As our father, as our prophet, teach us to learn, to be free, mm -hmm. to walk in that freedom from sin. Not go back to the same thing and be uh, bound to to the things that he already set us free from mm -hmm. and you keep going back that means that you forgot the wisdom that was going to set you free for that season oh that's good mm -hmm. so somebody can forget the wisdom 
And in that moment, forgetting the wisdom automatically reacquaints you with the prison that you got free from via that wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Did, did you know that there's different jails in America? Wow. Mm -hmm. um, Rutgers Park <laughs> or Rutgers Island mm -hmm. is not the same as the prison that you see down the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's some prisons that shank, shank, you know, and, and there's, there's prisons that, um, there's bandits in there. <laughs> so just think about that. Every prison is different. Mm -hmm. Everybody's prison before you come out mm -hmm. by the wisdom of God is different. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when you come out of that prison, there's a specialty of wisdom that scheduled your release date mm. Mm. that's good wow. Mm. wow and you got to understand that some levels of knowledge god actually give you probation when he set you free mm. wow mm. And, and you don't know you got probation officer right there visiting you mm. wow the prophet coming to tell you mm. are you keeping that <laughs> you're keeping that probation going and people start violating probation wow. and get locked up again. Mm -hmm. Son, I want you to tell mm -hmm. me what you feel about that, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Betty. What you what you what you taking from all this teaching? What's on your heart? Wow. That's wow. anything. Wow. Wow. We were um, the the deepness of your sentence. You could be sentenced for twenty years, mm. and what got you in the twenty years? That same energy has to bring you out. But when you come out, you're at zero. You're not on the positive. Mm. You, you're just at zero. You just broke even. So in order to get on the, back on the positive, where you're flowing with your profit, sowing seed, using the wisdom of God, you have to do double now than what you did before to get. So, it's, so it, it's, it's the, the levels have to increase. Whatever energy, and I, I've heard Papa say this before, you used all that energy when you was partying and doing your thing and, the, and you and that was your sentence. The Lord gave you probation. He let you he let you out, you know, early. Whoa. You could have been in there for life and then it, that would have been your eternal life. But he let you out early and now you gotta get to zero. Just because he left you out early, oh I'm free. I'm the, no, 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 no. You've had twenty years, thirty years, ten years of devilment and sin. Wow. Now you got to come back to zero. Yeah. And the zero is when you meet your prophet. He gives you instructions. He tells you how to sow. He tells you how to reap. He mm. tells you to ask God for wisdom. And then as you slowly do that, then you come on the positive side. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a lot more. And, and think about that. You, you, have to, you have to undo you have to undo things that you did after you call on Jesus mm -hmm. because you're free from it according to Jesus declaring that. Mm -hmm. But your memory could reacquaint you with those things. Mm -hmm. And if you're not going to be intentional about destroying the memory covenant, mm -hmm. there's a lot of you all don't understand memory covenant. Memory covenant is actually one of the most sneakiest covenants operating in everybody. Because mm -hmm. your memory could quickly take you back to something that you now have power over. Mm. And the memory will actually tell you that this is the best decision you should make now. And you done pass from death to life. That was the decision in death. And life mm. is mm. adversarial to that. Mm. Yeah. So so Satan and, and what's the mystery of memory when we deal with the fleshly mind? Mm -hmm. It's magic. Whoa. Mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. So the memory according to the fleshly mind is magic. That's why there's millions of people today, son, underneath spells. Wow. Mm. A spell is when Satan is using your memory to work magic on you. Mm -hmm. Not only your memory, but using your desire. Wow. If you desire a bird, 
God don't want you to have a bird. Satan will use that memory against you, or not the memory, the desire against you to create magic in your future decisions. Mm -hmm. So what you what you start doing will be in the direction of obtaining a bird. Mm -hmm. So a magician is not just a person that pit people together and say, I sever them and their, their body disappear. When your wisdom from God disappears, that means that you're in magic. Mm -hmm. When Peter cuts the man ear off, we're seeing the works of a magician. Because the magician is doing, he, he, he made the man's ear disappear. <laughs> wow. The man's ear disappears off of Peter's magic in his mind. Wow. Peter is working magic right in the presence of Jesus. And Jesus undoes the magic wow. in the presence of the magician. Mm. Whoa. Mm. You notice Jesus didn't say, I don't know, dog. That's all good, <laughs> dog. <laughs> the air on the floor. It, 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 I don't know what you're going to do, dog. <laughs> he put the man's ear back on, which means that it wasn't in God's will for the man to lose the ear. Wow. So Peter, Peter is an, a disciple and an apostle. Mm -hmm. My God, at the end, mm. so but the apostle that Jesus made him to be is not in his functionality. Mm. It's in his favor. Mm. There are some things that God declare about you that's in favor is not in your function. Mm. Mm. And if you don't get it in your function, hell going to be your portion in the end of your life. Wow. My God. Wow. So, so John 15 is all about getting what I favored you in into your function or else without the function, you have to be um, exiled to hell. You have to be cut off because that never got to the function that you are supposed to operate in. It just stayed in the favor realm. So what was King Saul? He was a king according to favor. Mm. He wasn't a king according to function because kings listen to the voice of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Kings fear God. Um, that's why in Proverbs 8, the wisdom angel is saying, by me, kings reign. Mm. So kings reign by the fear of God. Mm. Then all throughout Proverbs, they talk about that a king establishes his throne via righteousness, mm. which is the ways of God. And then Revelation 1, 5 through, uh, 5 through 6 is saying that he made us kings and priests unto God. So the kingliness is unto God. Hmm. So the kingliness is not unto money. Hmm. The kingliness is not unto uh, uh, clothes or shoes. The kingliness is not unto this world system. The kingliness is unto God. So even in kingship, it is a posture where you've been given the seal to minister to God now. Mm. Think about that. Mm. So Peter is an apostle according to favor, not according to function. Mm. It's not until the book of Acts that everybody that was in the discipleship started operating in their discipleship in function. Mm. They all was operating in favor. Because you notice Jesus took Peter up on the mountain, a transfiguration, and Peter is asking him, um, what they call it, an inappropriate request. Peter is saying, could I build a tabernacle? Mm -hmm. It's an inappropriate request for the moment. But yet that's where he is in his, his, his flow. The flow is just in favor. Mm -hmm. It's not in function. But see, Peter gets it right. It enters into function in the book of Acts. Wow. Hmm. But it, how did it operate in the function when the Holy Ghost uh, released the new dimension of himself to them? He came with more force. He came with more um, unveiling of his thoughts, his mind to them. They became more in harmony with his viewpoints. He put more pressure on their soul to be immersed in his ways. 
So now we're seeing the function come alive. Wow. Now, was the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts? Uh, 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 the Gospels? Yeah. The Holy Ghost was with Peter in the book of um, uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mm -hmm. But they didn't step into the function of what the Holy Ghost was teaching them into the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. Now, so Jesus was a man of sorrows, Isaiah said. Because Jesus was dealing with the curses that they kept from the prisons they were in before he called them to be disciples. Mm -hmm. And then he was a man of sorrows because the Pharisees remained in their prison. Their prison cell was religious. Mm -hmm. It was religion. Mm -hmm. And it was tradition. And so they loved going, wearing their long robes. They loved dressing a certain way. They loved being called man of God. They loved being called priest. They loved being called chief priest. They loved that. But they didn't love the idea of self-control, dying to self, learning afresh. Mm -hmm. They wanted to already identify that they already knew how God was, who God was, and thus and thus. Wow. Yeah. We have that going on today still. If you're a humble person, you have to recognize that everything God wants to say to you, he's not saying it to you in your mind. He's saying it to you through the mind of someone else. He's saying it through the mind of someone else. So everything God is saying to you, he not going to say it to your mind. Mm -hmm. He going to speak it to you through the mind of someone else. So their mind is going to have it and he's going to say it through them. Wow. And that's how humility works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we dealt with 444. When you see 111, you're dealing with God restoring generational blessing to you. Wow. Whenever you see 111, God has the oath that he spoke to Abraham on his mind. <laughs> Whenever you see 111, God is meditating on what he swore to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob he would do for you. <laughs> wow. Wow. So 444 is him now judging you to do the works of faith, not the works of flesh where, where you just doing vain stuff and saying, I'm going to earn God's blessing. No, no, no. The works of faith means that there's instructions he's going to start giving to you. Mm -hmm. And you got to soften your heart to do the instruction. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's what James was saying. Faith without works is dead. What James was really saying, if I, I'm interpreting his depth of wisdom to you so you can understand it. He was saying faith without instructions is dead. Wow. Mm -hmm. Faith wow. without obedience to the instructions is dead. <laughs> what you see? Wow, it's so powerful, Papa. Because um, you, uh, when you say that God will speak into someone else's mind to let you know what He thinks of you, right? We're going back to something that you say very powerful that you need to learn, or that you, that you need to know, and and take the truth from whichever angle God is coming at you. Maliki zono. If he's if he's get, telling you the truth about you in someone else's mind, how wow. are you gonna react to that? Wow. What's your reaction to that? That's good. You need because you good. you want to find out. That's good. The truth of you from God, but if God is using someone else, you're not gonna receive him. You're not gonna receive what God is telling you through them. Mm. That's 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 why you need to be humble. Mm. If God is speaking through someone's yeah, mind to you right, right. to let you know, okay, I don't like this in your personal life. Mm -hmm. Disconnect from here, from this person. Mm -hmm. Don't allow anybody to come in your house or this person in your house. Mm -hmm. Change your phone number. Uh, wow. Wow. Change wow. your social media or, or something. Mm. What's your reaction towards that instruction? Because mm. we all want the blessing of God, of course. But what are we willing to do to receive his blessing? That's good. What you see there, Bennett? Pastor Juan, 
kind of brought it home. When you, when you, but when you were saying one eleven, mm -hmm. I went to Deuteronomy one eleven, right? Um, and how you've been as the voice of wisdom, as the voice of order, as the voice of blessings to us. You've opened up our mind to the thousandfold blessing. Yes. You want to do Deuteronomy one eleven? Yes. yes. How you been? How you be blessed? Thousand. A you thousand got rapture. Don't <laughs> <laughs> uh, no worry, we're not working no magic. <laughs> Coming uh, <laughs> 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 he got a headless body over here. That's what they'll do. He was talking about magic, now he got a headless body. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> wow. So yeah, that that song. <laughs> the nigga that's talking ain't got no head. That's what they're gonna say. <laughs> this some deep stuff. Stay in the camera. <laughs> So yeah, that, that's that's uh, that's the first thing when, 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 <laughs> when Pastor Wall was saying that, and then when you were talking about one one one, that's the first thing that came out my mind. So I do the Army one eleven, and how the, the thousand fold blessing and, and blessing you, but you can't have that unless the voice that that the Lord has given you introduces you to that because I didn't know anything about Deuteronomy 111. Right. I didn't know what it meant until you introduced it. So now I know that's that's 111. You know, the yes. 444 and the other 111. It's yes. all, it's it's order, it's blessings, um, it's faith. Right. Yeah. Wow. And, and just think about that, son. When you see 111, you're dealing with an aspect where God is feeling convicted. Mm-hmm about what he told Abraham and he wants to perform it for you. He's letting you see the number that he saw when he released the, the verbal um, uh, words of that covenant. When he started talking about that covenant, he's letting you see it now. Wow. He's letting you understand this is what I saw when I said I'm going to give you a thousand times more. Mm -hmm. So when you see the number 111, God has Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob watching him in heaven right now. Mm -hmm. wow. They didn't forget, and he didn't forget, and it is is worldwide in the world of heaven. Wow. Mm -hmm. Everybody in heaven knows about this one, one, one. So when you see it on earth, God is looking for somebody that he could keep his oath in manifestation for you. Now he's not a liar. But many people are pitting him in the bracket of a liar because they're not operating in the belief of this one, one, one. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. The same way, nine, one, one. It means emergency. Mm -hmm. So even nine, one, one, it's a revelation that something is out of order and somebody needs to bring order to it. Mm -hmm. There's, there's reasons of your birth date. The birth day that you was born on has a point. When you came out of your mother's womb, God had made sure that the day that you came out would carry a numerical significance. Mm -hmm. A prophetic significance. Wow. And so when, when we look at that number... We're we looking at a, a supernatural significance that goes on with even your birth date. That's why I'm telling you that when, you're, when your birth date comes, there's a significance of why you was born on that day. And there's many things that goes on even when your birthday reoccurs in a year. So, you know, you was born as a toddler, a baby rather, an infant. <laughs> you know, some people look like toddlers when they come out. <laughs> <laughs> and they come out Bigfoot, you know, mm -hmm. 23 pounds, <laughs> like a Jordan Jr. <laughs> yeah, they already hungry. <laughs> a mammoth. <laughs> a gorilla unit. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and <laughs> when that happened, you know, uh, 
And that's kind of crazy when you try to hold your child and they cover your shoulder to your knees. Mm. <laughs> they, be like, mm. they be like, is they three years? No, mm. this this three three hours. <laughs> Are you carrying the baby or the baby carrying the baby? <laughs> <laughs> Granted, them babies like that, man. <laughs> You can't even buy a crib. You gotta buy a whole bed. <laughs> <laughs> or pull out couch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. That's gonna be dragging in the shopping cart the grocery store. <laughs> you put them in the store. <laughs> Michael Jackson moves while you <laughs> their feet all up like that, that <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. And they not just big without nothing, like they be bossy. <laughs> little, little Debo Jr., I'm telling you. And, and and you be wondering like woman, what you fed them when they was in the womb? <laughs> How much buffets they had in that womb? Hey. I think pregnant women, I think they need monitoring. <laughs> because, I, I, no, let's be honest now. There are some times you look at a pregnant woman and you believe that she should have her way, like eat whatever she wants, mm -hmm. she feeding too. Mm -hmm. But sometimes she be taking advantage of mm -hmm. that moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and the child coming out 25 pounds is evidence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they got five doctors trying to get the baby out of <laughs> I got the foot <laughs> I got the elbow <laughs> it's slipping down <laughs> They got LeBron James cream up there trying to dry their hands out. Pull the mama out. Pull the mama out. They done made a mistake pulling the woman out the bed. The woman on the floor, they don't even know what to do. Screaming, but they thought it was labor pain. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't stop pulling her because they thought it was labor pain. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I'm telling you, but I'm gonna tell you, the tum tum is done after that. <laughs> after, 25, after 25 pounds, you gotta adapt. <laughs> I'm gonna follow yeah. that up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You're gonna have to imagine a blow up doll after that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bless God. So, so <laughs> saints, what I want you to see here is there. There are some. There are some sequences that God gonna show you through numbers. The numbers are going to be Him showing you something that He's doing specifically for you. So when you see numbers, if you wake up at a certain time, it means something. Like every time you see 1041, that's Matthew 1041, every time. Whenever you see 1041, that's Matthew 1041, every time. Is if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. You receive a righteous man in the name of a righteous man, you receive a righteous man's reward. So when you see certain numbers, God is communicating. God loved numbers so much that he did the creation numerically. So that was day one. Mm-hmm. Adam was not in day one, mm -hmm. and Adam was not in day two, and Adam was not on day three. And so if you tried to locate an Adam in day two, you wasn't going to find it because numerically, God didn't want to bring forth Adam in the four mm -hmm. or in the three or in the two. He wanted to bring him forth at a specific numerical number. The same way on the seventh he didn't want to bring anything forth. So a lot of times people look at the number seven and say it's the number of completion. But the number of seven is also the number of rest. 
is the sabbatical number. Mm -hmm. When you see the number seven, it means that God is bringing you into rest. And rest, not just uh, how you think of it. It could be rest from condemnation. It could be rest from trying to petition to war for someone's soul. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times you want to save someone so bad that you're not willing to even receive the truth that they're not going to be saved. Mm -hmm. So the number seven is dealing with the end of you exerting energy into a thing. Mm -hmm. I never heard that. You ever heard that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a different perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. every, like you say, everybody thinks it's a completion number. Right. But it's a rest too. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. wow. And then in the book of Hebrews, I believe that's chapter four, it was talking about like there remaineth the rest for the children of God and talked about how God rested on the seventh day. Mm -hmm. So the number seven mean like this is the day that you bring ease to your brain about things that have been troubling you. Wow. When you see the number seven, God is telling you, cast those cares on me. Mm -hmm. wow. You never heard that, have you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you see the number seven, is the Lord saying, why don't you let me carry that burden? Mm -hmm. Why carry that burden in your heart? Why torment yourself on how this is going to end? When you see the number seven, a lot of times when women have sicknesses or diseases and men have sicknesses and diseases, God will show them the number seven. Because he's telling them, you so concerned about this issue in your body, I'm going to take it from you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to heal you from it. Mm -hmm. So just rest now. Mm -hmm. Give me something to work with that you believe in me. Mm -hmm. Create an atmosphere because my healing to you is a heart-to-heart -heart matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let your heart give me a little pleasure so I can work this thing out for you. Let me work it out for you. <laughs> it's like you being with a woman, um, and, and that's your wife, and she she up there looking at you with a stanky face. Like, like, ee, ee, ee. like if she looking at you like that, like and she and you like, what's wrong? We 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 don't know what we're gonna do two years from now. Baby, 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 I'm trying to give you two years worth of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give you two years worth of buddy love when he was pulling up on Miss Purdy <laughs> and with the radio station on. I'm trying to give you two two years worth of this. and and the atmosphere not right for heart to heart. So, son, what is rape? And rape is a horrible thing. It is the absence of heart to heart. Mm. There's a man, but I can't just say a man because woman done did it too. <laughs> <laughs> woman done pit pistol and said, "You you you gotta let let it happen." <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a true story. And pull out the pistol. Mm. You gotta drop him. <laughs> <laughs> so, rape is a horrible thing. But if you want to look at the secret of it. It's not a heart-to-heart -heart matter. Mm -hmm. This person's heart is, I'm going to take advantage of you. Your heart is no. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give myself. And they mm -hmm. are doing something that is opposite to your heart. God doesn't do that mm -hmm. with healing and with the prophetic and with uh, the blessing. Your heart got to be in um, allegiance, mm -hmm. in alignment with his heart. And that's why the Bible said in Deuteronomy 28, these blessings shall overtake you. Because mm -hmm. the blessings are actually um, God seeing that your heart to heart with him is in the proper posture. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's why he's saying, these blessings shall overtake you for those that hearken diligently to my voice. Why are you hearkening diligently to his voice? That means that your heart is focused on his voice. So while your heart is focused on his voice, he's saying, I'm going to make what's in my heart overtake you, which is me rewarding you for giving me the atmosphere I wanted. Mm -hmm. wow. Your obedience worships God and it gives him what he fantasized about. And then the blessing uh, worships you and give you what you fantasize about. Wow. Mm -hmm.